Bishop indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, look at our neighbor next to his father. Tell him happy Father's Day. Give him a high five. Tell him happy Father's Day. And then we can have our seats. Uh, Pauline Ngendo. Pauline Ngendo. Could not certificate here. Pauline Ngendo. Pauline Ngendo. Akawapi. Shira, you can help this to Pauline Ngendo. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe. Allow me to appreciate our daddy in the house, our bishop and our mom, for the opportunity that uh, they have given us many, many times to start in this place. Amen. It is not something that you take for granted, but I have a reason to thank God for his goodness. Allow me also to appreciate uh, Anne and my beautiful queen. Amen. You know, I, 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 <laughs> and you can stand, maybe people won't see you that uh, they know that uh, when they are. Thank you very much, Anne. Me and Anne, we are blessed with the four children, our uh, four great generations. Amen. One has gone to the Sunday school. The other one is seated over somewhere on that side. Yeah, Caleb is over there. Nancy is over somewhere around. Also here, there. And Newton is somewhere around inside there. Amen. And we bless the Lord. We thank God. We don't take for granted what the Lord has done. This morning, uh, you can be very sure that the Spirit is talking about fathers. Fathers are great people. Amen. Fathers are wonderful people. Fathers are people that we should and we will honor. Amen. Like Mom Ali said, without the fathers, we will not be there. So this morning I'll be talking about fathers. That will be the message. That will be the focus. Fathers. But before I bring the message, I will preach with a number of people. So I did another microphone that was somewhere here. They'll take a few minutes as we celebrate fathers in our lives, as we celebrate fathers in the ministry, in this church, and as we celebrate fathers in general. Amen? I said fathers need to be celebrated. And you realize why before we come to the very end of the, of the, of, of the sermon. I want to ask Ian Mati. Where is Ian? Let's approach this young man. This young man who was on the nation newspaper Wednesday. He cel was celebrating his, his dad. I told him, come and say it here. What he, what he said in the newspaper. And he's a great man. Amen. You shake him on the Forbes. You see him over there. That is Ian. And that is the mother uh, to Ian. And the dad is over there. But you can see them. That is the newspaper. It requires Wednesday. Thank you. There is a, all the waters here so that they can choose which one to take. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Ian. Uh, um, praise God. Um, praise God again. Uh, my name is Ian. Um, this is my mom and uh, my dad, and his mama. And my, my brother is somewhere there. No. <laughs> the brother is somewhere over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have a queen yet, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so, my, okay, what, what was actually in the newspaper is, um, I'm, I, I do business um, at this young age, yeah? so I run a fashion label and um, I'm a shareholder at a property management firm, and um, the reason why I do this is because uh, my father is a businessman, and um, I've seen so much that um, happened when he decided to get into business, and for me, he's been my role model. So basically, whatever I see he, uh, him doing, I put it in, in practice in my business, and uh, it's been a success for me so far. So, yeah. Wow. Let's approach Ian. The story is bigger if you read the newspaper, but he's saying the daddy is a role model. The research says that someone, this is the research says that a boy loves his mother. 
but we always follow his father. <laughs> Amen. That is such. The boy loves his mother, but we always follow his father. That's why fathers are important. And fathers should be celebrated. And fathers should, not be take for, should only be taken for granted. So this morning I'll be talking about fathers. Not be like this boy who was asked to define the father's day. And he said, it is just like the mother's day. Only that you don't spend much on the gifts. <laughs> fathers. I want to invite one great father. Amen. And you tell us why he honored his daddy. General Bethel Rukungo. Let's appreciate this great father. He is a great man. Karibu sana. Thank you. Karibu. Wana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the name church. Praise the Lord church. I'm delighted and happy to be here today. I don't assume, I cannot take it for granted because it has taken the hand of the Lord. Puana asifiwe sana. God is good. All the time. And all the time? Uh, getting better. I think you, you are not very sure. God is good. I am a testimony. And all the time? Things are getting better. Woo! Amen. Church, things are getting better on my side. Things are getting better with my family. Yeah, I comes. am blessed and I thank the Lord. Amen. Uh, when Pastor Mwede called me and he told me I will be sharing. I will be saying something. <laughs> uh, to obey is better than? And I'm obeying, I obey. And because I was, in the, I was a soldier, I know what uh, instructions mean and orders. I've obeyed. Uh, uh, when Pastor Mwede called me and he told me, eh, hey, Brother Rukongo, I want you to participate in my service on Sunday. I, I was a bit uh, surprised and uh, I, I, I was hesitating because, not because I feared, but because of the weather. When it gets to July, kuna mambo ambayo nakumbushawa na muiri, kambarindi. But I said in the name of Jesus, akutakuwa na mbarindi, I will come. Amen. The other thing, what excited me is because he touched on the father, which reminded me and he rekindled the sweet memories of what happened between me and my father about three weeks ago, something of the sort. And so this morning, I am delighted, I am excited, I am happy. I am born again. I am better than yesterday. Amen. Let me say, I am better than yesterday because of Jesus Christ. Amen. He has continued to renew my strength day by day. My name is Bethuel Mwaneki Rukungu. I'm a Kenyan, so don't confuse Rukungu thing. Maybe I'm from Zaire or Congo. I'm a Kenyan from Embu County. I am a father, and I want to salute fathers who are here this morning. I want to salute grandfathers who are here this morning. I want to salute fathers to be, fathers to be very soon, coming soon this morning, amen? And I want to salute very special people, those who are kanu, kanu ni papa na mama, akuna muze, Amen, Dr. Kuria. I salute you for holding on, praying double row, and standing firm all those years or months. God bless you. Before I talk about my father, or how I honored my father, for those who may not be knowing me, and a bit of my history or backing ground in this church, let me say, um, a cancer healed free man. 
Amen. Just a bit of background. 207 diagonalized with tumor which came out to be at first not cancerous, not malignant, but later on became malignant and it was tough. It was not easy. And I want to salute and give flowers to you, Deliverance Church members. Pokeni Mawayangu. You are wonderful people. Methodious groups. Munanjijua too, you stood with us. 2012, I was checked and found free of cancer. And so I am a living testimony. And by the way, I want to appreciate my wife. Fathers, watch this corner. Chukua your picture. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I will be very brief. Uh, somebody stop that watch. Uh, God healed me. Thank you for standing with me. I'm a walking miracle. If you have never seen a miracle in your life, you are looking at one. Amen. And I can say that without any doubt, yes, without any shame, yes. because God healed me. And he never healed me to eat ugari and giveri. He preserved my life so that I can testify of the doings of the Lord, of the wonderful healing of the Lord. And I want to tell you this morning, he can do it. He can heal you or your family member. It does not matter what they said. God is able. I'm a walking miracle. Commonly known by Mayor Miracle Boy. Commonly called or referred to by Mayor Miracle Boy. Puanas Fuesana. I come from a polygamous family. <clears throat> uh, my father became polygamous when I was in primary school. <clears throat> things were not very bad, but to some of you who have backing ground, that kind of a backing ground, you know, the ruggling, the uh, push and the push in polygamous families, you know, the disappointment, frustrations, those who are coming from that kind of backing ground understand. 20, 20, 2001. Yeah, 2001. That's... Yeah, it's okay. Hello? Yeah. 2001. <laughs> Out of nowhere, my father did something about the, the shamba, an ancestral land, which was contrary to the norms of the society, of Kenyan law, of land laws in Kenya, and to the society. And so some of us decided to seek for justice, but it was tough, we were unbeaten, because he had the financial muscles, which we did not have. And we were even beaten. And so the family was split into two. There was the ruling party and the opposition. I was in the opposition. Uh, some of people in the opposition, my real brothers, in the course of the journey, because it was tough, because money was going left and right, they defected to the ruling party. And the going became tough. We used all the machineries available. All the machineries we had to. And as I finish, they are developed as stalemate. No talking, no communication from that year. It's more than 10 years. And we stayed put. Later on, I became sick. 
and there were a lot of talks from there. Funny bad talk, hero talk. And two years ago, me and my wife, we, we were prompted by the spirit of how we can honor that museum, regardless, in, in spite of, it was not easy. This was a mountain. This is when I realized what Jesus meant by, if you have a small speck of faith, like a mustard, small faith, like a mustard seed, you can command a mountain to go, and it will move to the sea, or evaporate. This was a mountain, a big one, we do not know how to start, but the Spirit is telling us, honor that man. And he has some moving on. And he honored the man. We went there. Yeah. With some few friends. We honored the man. And there are some photos there. You it can was see. wonderful. This is you can dad. see it. We cried. Tears were coming out, mixed with the mucus. <laughs> and I want to thank some friends who accompanied us there. Because that Muse stood and declared, I love you, Amen. I bless you. Amen. With his mouth. Amen. He said in a kuparik. He and declared he in the front of people. Mm. I want to thank Pastor Mwede for ministering during that occasion. It was wonderful. Amen. I love my father. Brethren, friends, it does not matter what that Muse or Mama has done to you. Swallow the proud, uh, shake off your personality, yes. go and bless him. It yes. does not matter what he has done to you. Amen. Don't worry. Amen. Go and bless him. That's your, your duty, the Bible says. Amen. And then you walk away. That one happened. I'm happy. We are blessed people. In the creed, we are blessed. And Amen. you cannot unbless. Because the Bible says you cannot turn in place when you bless. Amen. Let's God bless you. Kongos. God bless you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Pastor Mwede. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Hallelujah. Let's appraise them and get better. <laughs> Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Now, Saud, can you give us a mother three men? I, I, then I'll just come and, 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 and uh, summarize. Yeah? Let's hear some God, somebody called Dal, Dal Strawberry. My relationship with my father was uh, a broken relationship. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic and, and he beat me and, and said I'd never amount to nothing. And um, then my mom ended up divorcing him. He was no longer in my life. And after him leaving the house, I realized at that point that no one would ever control me again. Um, because of the scars that was left in me from my dad. But I come to find out in his life that his father was abusive and he was an alcoholic. So it's like a generational curse that happens uh, that a lot of us don't know and they end up with scars. And my dad ended up with a lot of scars and he brought the scars into our life and, and became a, a major problem. Um, and I kept him on my life for a very long time. There was no communication whatsoever. I had a major league career, and, and I achieved all these great things as a major league player. And I was very saddened about the fact that my father has no parts of that. Um, it broke my heart. And when God changed my life, you know, my heart ended up um, being real soft and, and really wanting to go back and um, amend that relationship with my father. And one Sunday, the Lord had sent me down to the hospital to go visit him. Um, I wrestled with it, but the Lord told me I needed to go. And, and he spoke to me clearer about the fact that I needed to repent to my father. Because God said to me that two wrongs don't make a right. And I think a lot of times we, we think we're right, and, and I realized I wasn't right. So God wanted me to go down and not talk about what he did to me, but actually go to him and repent to him for keeping him out of my life. And I did, and I cried. I, I cried hard. I laid on his lap and told him I was sorry. I was wrong. I said, this has nothing to do with you. This has to do with me. Um, and then the Lord said at that moment, he says, lead him to the Lord now. And I asked him, did he want to accept the Lord? Because my life had changed. 
and I ended up leading my father to the Lord. And it was the miracle in that that God had in that because God explained to me clearly that um, he didn't know any better and you didn't know any better. God, God reminded me, um, how dare you not forgive him and I forgave you. And I cried more and it, it was just a, it was a joyful moment to, to be able to know that God used me uh, to lead my father to the Lord. And it's just amazing what God will do if we just can get beside ourselves and, and say, yes, we'll do what you ask us to do. That is Dallas Trubini. God led him to go and seek forgiveness from his father. Kirk. Let's hear this other Cameron, I'm so happy to be involved with the Fatherhood Commission and millions of others in the Honor Your Father campaign. I'm a dad who has six kids, and all throughout the Bible I see that fathers and mothers are highly esteemed because they're in charge of raising the next generation of human beings, of kingdom citizens, and instilling the values, the spirituality, and the morality of the next generation. But fathers in particular are also called to provide and to protect to be prophets and priests to their families. And if you're a dad, this is what you're being called to. If you're a woman, this is the kind of man that you want to lead your family. So pray for the fathers in your life. Pray for the future fathers in this world. Here's the commandment. Honor your father and your mother. This is a commandment with a blessing that it may go well with you and you will live a long life on the earth. Well, honor your father. Uh, my dad left when I was two months old. I never met him and, until I was almost in college. I used to hate my dad. And then I became a Christian and I just intensely disliked him. <laughs> and then I really trusted Christ and realized, you know what, um, scripturally, not only do I need to forgive him, I need to honor him. Now that didn't mean that, you know, I had to say, you know, uh, something that wasn't true. He wasn't there, chose not to be. But one of the things I did is I looked at my dad's life and one of the areas that he did do well in was he fought for our country in World War II, got the Silver Star at a place called Guadalcanal. He was a third Marine Division guy and I took all of his medals and all of his uh, awards that he won, his three Purple Hearts and I put him in a shadow box and I uh, real pretty framed it and put it above the piano where our daughters played the piano because they could honor that about their grandfather and I could as well. So you know what? Honor your father. Honor your father. Help me read the Bible. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Let's begin from verse number 3 to 17. This is what we call the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other God before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image in likeness of the anything like this in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them for I the Lord your God I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember that Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do not work. You shall do no work. You know, you know your son, know your daughter, know your male servant, know your female servant, know your cattle, know your stranger who is within your gates. Verse 11. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. The sea know that is in them. And rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the, the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Verse number 12 will be our key verse. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the Lord which the Lord God the Lord your God is giving you verse 13 you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal 
You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your, neighbor, your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. No his male uh, servant, no his female servant, no his ox, no his donkey, no anything that is in your neighbor's. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, within the few remaining minutes, dear Father, I pray, speak, dear Father, to us in Jesus' name. The Bible says in verse number 12, honor your father and your mother. Amen. So that your days may be longer or so that you may live long in the land the Lord God is giving you. I want to bring in a few minutes just an introduction of my message. And when, when you look at those ten commandments, the, the first five, the first four, or the first fives, talks about the uh, vertical relationship with God. But when you get to chapter, verse number 12, at the middle, God brings a command. And he says, honor your father and your mother. Then what follows thereafter are commands that relate with others. So the first one before we get to honoring, it is about relating with God. At the middle, God brings in a command that has a promise attached to it. Honor your father. In Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 16, would you bring it for us? Deuteronomy 5 16. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. That your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which God the Lord, your God, the Lord your God is giving you. What is to honor? Briefly. To honor is to show abundant, merited respect. It is to affirm great worth and value. Amen. And God brings out a command that we respect, we affirm, we give great worth and value to our father and our mothers. But because today is a father's day, allow me to just focus on the father. Amen? Not that we don't want, but allow me to be a bit... Yeah. Yes. And talk about the fathers because it's the father's day. The Webster Dictionary defines honor as to respect greatly, to regard highly, to treat with reference and courtesy. Yani, to respect greatly, to regard highly, treat with reference and courtesy. That is what the Webster says. The Hebrew uses the same word and literally it means to make heavy. In other words, you don't take your father lightly. Amen. You don't take your, that's a Hebrew definition. The literal word, the literal meaning of it. You you handle him heavily. You don't handle him lightly. In other words, you give them respect. They deserve. You may say, but you don't know my father. You don't know what he did to me. The word of God is coming to us so clearly. Without any conditions. Because God didn't say, honor your father if he did anything good to you. The Bible does not say, Honor your father because he is good. The Bible says, tells us, honor your father. But it gives a promise to it. One of the great Bible experts are called Gil. He says this, honoring your father means to love, to reference. It also means that their collections will be submitted to the offenses any offense against your father should be acknowledged. Even their tempers should be bore with. That is the, exp the exposition that you should even bear with the tempers of your father. Their infirmities should be covered. They are to be honored in thought, in word, and gesture. They are to be highly thought and to be esteemed. They are to be spoken of honorably. And with great veneration, and they are to be behaved in a very respectful manner. 
They are to be relieved, assisted, maintained in a comfortable way when they are aged. And the Jews bring in and say, to honor your parents. For the Jews, they would honor them by giving them food, drink, clothing, and loosening their shoes, leading them out and in. Honoring the father. And the Jews also looks at this command at the middle of that commandment. And they say it is the weightiest or the weightiest command of the law. And the reward bestowed on it, it is length of days. Amen. That when you do so, not only are you going to enjoy in the land where you are living, but it gives a promise of some long days. When I was going through this, I felt God there is something you are speaking to me and speaking to us today. Maybe why we have a lot of trouble today, even in our country, it is because at one point, fathers were dishonored. Amen? Fathers were, dis were dishonored. I remember one time when there was an exchange between uh, 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 President Moy and, uh, and Kibaki, and people three manned. Remember? That was a dishonor to the father. And so long as there is a dishonor to the father, then the consequences, the consequences are true and they happen to us. But I want to talk about three things. I want to, or let me bring three ways or three things or three benefits or whatever you call it. Maybe three thoughts on honoring the fathers. Number one, fathers are imperfect people. Amen. Fathers are imperfect people. One of the things you and me, we are so sure is that we ourselves have been raised by imperfect people. Amen. And even us, we are imperfect people. Even how we are relating now with our fathers, with our mothers, with our siblings, with our, you know, we are relating with them as imperfect people. So when God is telling us, honor your father and your mother, and he says, or does he not give us a condition? God knows it is possible. In other words, God knows he can give us the grace to do so. And who should be honored? This include all fathers, all kinds of fathers. Those who are attentive, those who are neglectful, those who are kind, those who are abusive, those who are absent. Amen. Those who are believers and those who are not believers. The command is not conditional. It isn't conditional. Why? It's because they're imperfect. And it requires a work of faith to go through this process. And God is telling you to honor your father. That sometimes when you think about your father, you do not even know how to respond, how to react. When I was telling with Bethuel, he told me for over 10 years, they had never talked with the father. Talking over 10 years. But the Lord God spoke to him. Go and honor him. Amen. When uh, we were there, and because I have their permission, the pastor who was leading, because they went with the pastor, who was their best uh, couple, they went to look for the father. And when they went to the shopping center, and they had this Lokogo who is coming, he said, I'm not going to see him. Tell him to go and look for me. Let me leave it there. Now, why is it because over those years? But God spoke to him and told him, go and honor your father. And I'm here this morning saying, friends, it is a high time we take this command. Not just our, special, our, our, our biological fathers. This, this, this role talks about those who are above us in authority. Amen? It requires faith. And I know God is going to give us the faith. Fulfilling this command will not be possible without the Spirit of God working in us. To honor our fathers, it is to affirm their value, like I said, apart from their imperfection. It is to separate, listen to this, honoring that father, it is to separate his worth and value from their behavior. Amen? It is why you separate their worth and their value from their behavior. Their behavior may not be right. Their behavior may not be correct. 
But the command tells us, separate their worth and their value and honor them. But remember, it is only Christ who can help us to do so. Paul says in Romans chapter 5 verse number 8, But God the most is own love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, God is able to give us the grace that we can go back to our fathers and honor them. Amen? Number two, because I said I'm just summarizing now. Number two, honoring fathers will bring healing. I'll repeat again. Honoring fathers will bring healing. Demonstrating that love to imperfect people, it is a beginning that will bring healing to us. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 says, Honor your father and your mother so that you live a long time in the land God is giving you. That is the message Bible. In, 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 in Genesis chapter 15 verse 26, Exodus, 20, Exodus 15 26, the Bible says when we, when we obey this command, he says, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God. If you listen carefully to the, Lord, to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, obeying his command, keeping all his decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord God who heals you. But he brings it out that if we obey the command, if we obey the commands he has given us, if we listen to his voice, what is the command? Honor your father. If we do so by listening to the command and honoring your father, the Lord God is saying, he will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent to the Egyptians, for I am the Lord God who heals you. Forgiving our fathers, that is true, baby. God told him, go forgive your father. And he was saying, no, I cannot give, forgive him. The, the mess he has done, if you listen to many of them, it is, they are coming from a background whereby they had abusive father. The father was a drunkard. He would beat him up. And he also realized his grandfather was the same. But God tells him, all I need you to do is go forgive your father. And the moment he forgives, he goes to the father. He does not tell the father, you did this to me. He says, this is about me. It's not about you. It is about me. This is about me. I need you to forgive me. And the moment the father forgave him, the Lord told him, now you can lead your father to Christ. Amen. Forgiving others, no matter how significant they have hurt us, is a direct command from God. And he is telling us, he will give us the power to obey his command. Amen. He will provide the liberating power of forgiveness towards those who have hurt you too. And forgiveness completes the emotional healing process. Forgiveness is a beautiful gift from God who has our best interest at heart. And to refuse this gift is to remain in bondage to the pain of the past. God wants us to forgive so that we can put away anger and experience the full healing that comes from his comfort. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 3 to 32, the Bible says, Let all bitterness, love and anger, and grammar and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God, as God in Christ also has forgiven you. That we will forgive. We will not allow bitterness. We will not allow anger or love or crime, but you put them away. And by so doing, you experience your healing. Honoring fathers will bring healing. An honoring heart loves enough to confess any unhealed offenses to their fathers and they will seek forgiveness. Seeking forgiveness of those who have hurt to you, it gives way to fully forgive them. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 32 says, And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. When we forgive, when we honor our fathers, there is healing that is released. If you think about it, maybe when you are growing up, you know, I had enough time to look at my life. Uh, my father, the biological father, I have good, wonderful memories. Amen? Of my father. Sometimes those are wonderful, good memories. I remember when we were young, 
He was working in a bakery. Idiots. Idiots. Huh? That means bled. It was like a kawaii. In fact, even the neighbors would come to our house for bread. Because he was working in the bakery. Amen. Good, wonderful memories. But I also remember moments when we were chased with our mother and we went to sleep in the neighbor's house. Does this sound familiar? Huh? But you see, if you go back and dig down in your memory line, you will see some of the good things your father did. Amen? You may also see some of the bad things that maybe your father did. Unfortunately, he, he went on to be with the Lord when I was too young. I was in primary school. So sometimes, I am unable to relate with him because I was young. And I grew up not having a father in the house. And so even in my adulthood, sometimes it was very hard to mention the word dad. It was, it was strange to me. And I remember, one time when we went for the encounter, and the bishop was the one who had taken us for the encounter, and that thing came to me so strongly that I could not mention the word dad even to him. Because of? And I went to him and he prayed for me. And from that moment on, God helped me. There was a release. Amen? There was a release. Honor your father. Honoring your father. Maybe you are saying, my father did this to me. And you can look back and see some areas that you're saying, this is what my dad did. This is what my father did. God is saying, as you honor them, you experience your healing. Amen? Ezekiel 22 verse number 7 but verse it says, if you have made light your father and your mother. In other words, don't take your father lightly. There's a young boy here today and this is very true, it happens. You have been in various relationships. You, broke, you break them left, right. And why you do so? Because you fear intimacy. Because in your childhood there was, there was trauma because of your pallet. Maybe you absent fathers. You do not want to to get involved, you fear because of what you have come through. When you honor them, when you honor the fathers, you receive your healing. There are some of us here, you do not want to answer to any male authority. Amen? You do not want them even to question you. Why? It's because there is some past that you are fighting with. There is some past that has haunted you. There is that past that you do not want to, you know, to see them again or to remember, God is saying, honor your father. Amen. I read a quote by somebody called Mark Twain. And he says, when I was a boy of 14 years, my father was ignorant. I could hardly start to have the old man allowed. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much the old man had learned. Now, you can always ask yourself and, and, and get the answer. Who, who, who became wiser? Is it the father? Yeah, this 14, is it when he was a teenager, he thought the father is very ignorant. But when he was 21, he realized his father was more wise. You know, fathers, when we reflect and you can say, yes, I missed my father in this particular area, but I need the healing. Jesus said, if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive their men their sins, your father will not forgive you your sins. As we, 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 as we reflect, as we identify those hearts, as we explore those reactions, we can allow God to provide someone who will share and will bring comfort to us. Number three, and as I wind up, honoring fathers will bring blessings. Honoring fathers will bring blessings. Not only just healing. There are blessings that only fathers will bring to your life. Amen? There are blessings only fathers can release. I'm not belittling the mothers. They are wonderful people in our lives. Amen? I have one great mother in my life. I saw her on uh, Friday. Is it Friday? Saturday? Friday. And I told her, before we leave your house, we want you to pray for us. We are with Zachary. And she prayed a prayer. You feel nice when your mother is praying for you. Covering you. You know, and I knew for sure this one. Amen. 
They are blessings that only fathers can release. If you go back to the Bible, every blessing to the children came from the fathers. Read your Bible. The fathers will lay hands on the children and speak blessings. You know, some of those things, you know, you, you, you look at it. The father to Jacob, he lays out on him and tells him, in fact, uh, he, he told him, first of all, he told him, you, 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 your smell is like that of the field. And I was wondering, suppose today you tell your son, your smell <laughs> is like that of the Echamba. You know? <laughs> but he thought, he thought he was speaking to Esau because Esau, that was his life. But he spoke blessings and every blessing they spoke, believe you me, they came to pass. Even to Jacob, as much as he was calling his father, all the blessing that was spoken over the life of Jacob, each one of them came to pass. In other words, there are blessings only father will release. That's why it's important to honor them. We read in, De in Deuteronomy chapter 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 16, Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord your God has commanded, that your days may be long, that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord God is giving you. In the message Bible says, Respect your father and mother, God, your God command, you'll have a long life. Amen? You'll have a long life. The land that God is giving you will treat you well. Maybe why Nairobi is not treating you well. Amen? It's because you have not honored your father. Or you dishonored your father. And you're here, you're struggling in this Nairobi. This is the word of God that is saying, if you honor your father, the land he has given you will treat you well. Praise the Lord. That it means we go back and do what the word of God says so that that can change our situations. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 2 to 3. We know the Bible says, Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may be well with you and that you may live long on this earth. The message the Bible says, Honor your father and your mother. is the first commandment that has a promise attached to it so that you live well and have a long life. I read a portion and uh, I, I, I was looking for it. I could remember. It said that respect your father and treat your mother well when she is of age. And I was wondering, respecting the father and then treating and taking care of the mother when she is of age. But I couldn't be able to, to get maybe the difference. But I'm saying, honoring our father will release our blessing. Amen? When you think about what God has done through our, our palace, through our fathers. When you go down the memory line of our children, then we can see good things they did. And as we honor them, the blessing of the Lord shall be upon us. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 17, and this one is a bit scaling. Amen. The eye that mocks his father and scorns his obedience to his mother, the lovers of the valley will pick it out and the young eagles will eat. Yani, iyo jisho yako, inao fihaki baba yako, dege watakuja wafanya nini, waitoe. Honor your father. There are blessings that comes with it. Fathers also pass rich legacy. You know, when I was reading Psalms chapter 78, the Bible says, he issued his laws to Jacob and his structures to Israel. And then they were supposed to be passed on from generation to generation, even to those who are not yet born. They pass rich legacy. When we honor them, we become beneficiaries of these rich legacies. And to the Jewish father, the blessing of a Jewish father meant a lot. And I wish we can, we can, we can echo and we can copy the Jewish as far as the blessing of the father was concerned. A Jewish, a Jewish young son or a Jewish child would do anything possible to get the blessing of the father. Amen. But for us here, sometimes we want to behave. Amen. Like they don't exist. It's upon them, you know. It's okay. God is speaking to us this morning as I wind up that we honor our fathers. Amen? Honoring our fathers. That we can see the blessing. 
I was looking at Genesis 27, and, and the Bible says, Therefore, may God give you all the dew of heaven. This is a blessing of the Father, the blessing of the heaven, the fatness of the earth, the plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you, and nature's bow down to you. Be a master over your brethren. Let your mother's son bow down to you. Cast be everyone who curses you. Blessed be those who bless you. The blessing of the Father. Amen. The God is losing the blessing. And, and, and uh, I, I like what Pastor Ngobbe quote, and I, and I went back to, in, in, in the 1703, 1703 we have Jonathan Edward. Jonathan Edward was a preacher. And Jonathan Edward, in the neighborhood where he was staying, he had a small place in the forest. I was reading his, his biography, and I was, and he, would, he had 11 children. Jonathan Edward would pray for 11, his 11 children by name. And he will speak blessing upon his children, each one of them, one by one. He would lay hands on them. When was the last time you fathers laid hands on your children? Amen? Or they just see you appear and disappear. It's high time we fathers who are here, that we realize we carry the blessings of our children. We call it the blessing to our children. That if you are a father, that you take time to pray. Lay hands on your children. Amen. Call them. Lay hands on them. Speak the blessing. It is biblical. It has backs you up. But some of other fathers are not available. We are absent. We are busy. Please, it's a high time fathers we saw being so busy, but be available for our children. Amen. They're looking for you. They're looking for the father. They're looking for that father in their life. But they are not getting that father in, your, in, in their life. No wonder we are having trouble. Because of lack of... Let me tell you the truth. The problem in Nyeri is not the women. No. No. It's lack of fathers. Amen. It's not the women. I come from Nyeri. Myself and I know. Is lack of fathers. And what has lacked there in Nyeri, not by the way, not in Nyeri, it is even in your village, you know it. You know, it's only that in Nyeri, that the bishop was saying they were courageous, they came and spoke it out. It is in your village. That fathers are not there. And I'm praying that God may give us fathers, because fathers will release blessings. Amen. The fatherhood in Nyeri, where I come from, they have become drunkards. And that is our biggest trouble. So the boy child, in, the boy child has grown seeing drunkards. And so the best thing they can do is to become drunkards. And the women, because they have been toiling, working, they have gotten tired. I'm not defending them. But I'm saying it's a high time that we ask, God, give us fathers. In conclusion, what are we supposed to do? Think about your life. Think about that father. Amen. And maybe if possibly your father is not there. You can look for a spiritual father. You can look for a figure father. And I'm saying this. Fathers releases blessings. Amen. One time when I realized this. I remember one time I took my wife. I took all my children. We didn't do much. Amen. We went to our bishop. We went to his house and mom. And I told my children, we want to go and tell Bishop, we want, I want him to become my, my, my father. Amen? We, I took them there and said, I want you to become my father. That I can get somebody who can be releasing the blessings over my life. Amen? Sometimes that's what we are lacking. You can identify somebody. You just need to pay a visit or a call or write and just appreciate them, honor them. You may need to go to your father, like Bethel did. And let me say this. When you go to your father, do like what Dal said. Be specific. Admit your lungs. Amen? Don't be sorry. Admit your lungs. And don't start, you know, explaining. For justifying. Forget about them. And then without, with no explanation or rationalization or justification, just ask your father to forgive and release you. Amen? Praise the Lord. And that emotional healing will be released. The blessing will be released 
to each one of us. Proverbs 23, 25 says, let your father and your mother be glad and let who bow you rejoice. So make your fathers happy. The message Bible says, make your father happy. How can you make your father happy? Is just going to the father and honoring your father. Praise the Lord. This is my prayer. That we here who we have fathers, we will take time to go and honor. When you honor fathers, they will release the blessings. When you honor fathers, we will receive the healing. But remember, we honor them in spite of their imperfection. Because we are not perfect. I want to ask all the fathers in this house to stand. All the fathers. All the fathers in this house. Amen. To stand. And because we have a spiritual father over here. I want, to, I want him to pray for us. And if he is over there. Let's celebrate these fathers. Amen. Please, let's celebrate these fathers. And let me say this. So long as there is no honor to the fathers. The curses that are in the Bible will still come. Amen. When I read the Bible and I realized, if you are cursed by your father, that curse, some of them were cursed and the earth swallowed them. Amen. By dishonoring the fathers. I want to ask our bishop and her to come and pray for us and the fathers. I know that um, the sermon that we have received today is a tough one to us, even those that are still seated down. The reason is because we have believed that what they did to us was wrong and we can justify it. They kicked us out. They beat us up. They did not pay school fees for us. My father was not available at all. I even don't know him. And you can stand there and justify it. Let me tell you what. Deliverance Church 19, 2000 we did an act because Deliverance Church was started by a man called Joe Kyle. He left the church 1978. But that day when we blessed him with a car, we bought a new car for him and gave him at Nyayo National Stadium. From that, it released to our ministry vehicles that some of us had never dreamt that one day we were going to, to drive. Why? Because he released a blessing upon us. The same year we blessed Twimi Singh, we bought him a house. Actually, he tells me his house is like a, a retreat center. Eight bedrooms. He also released a blessing to us and some of us started seeing millions for the first time. We had no idea what a million looks like. But in the year 2000, I started seeing a million, how it looked like because of the blessing of a father. I don't know what your father did. But listen, don't go and I go out. Just go and tell them your attitude was wrong. And tell him what you say to me, I took it and my attitude was wrong. I'm asking of your forgiveness. Now remember, some of you have a problem with a father who died 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago. You need to look for someone who can stand in and tell him, you are representing my father and I'm asking for forgiveness from you so that the blessings of the fathers can be released upon us. I said even you that have sat there, maybe you even don't want to hear the name. Watch Imamboigine, the name. You hear the name, you want to vomit. But I'm saying, swallow your pride. Swallow your pride. There is a blessing of a father. You're not going for anything. For Okongo, we told the father that we don't want his shamba. We are not taking him to share the, the shamba. We want him to be blessed. And I declared in that place that the life of Rukongo will never be the same again. Because God will bless him with the shambas. God will bless him in his life. And already he has blessed him. He has a shamba also. So the thing is, let's learn to say it. If your father is still alive, go bless them. Just go. And only that. 
na utakuta wazee wengi watalia machozi kwa sababu hajasikia hivyo wewe ukimwambia umependa i have a father today in this altar lord god almighty i want to bring the men that are standing here that your father you will release a blessing of fathers upon them so that they can bless their children and dear father i release some of them to have the courage to go and ask for forgiveness and bless their biological fathers in the mighty name of jesus i'm also praying for our sisters that are still seated that god if there is a struggle anywhere that you release a grace upon them to stand and go and tell their parents and honor them and bless them because there is a blessing that comes from the fathers lord god we pray that our life in this church will never be the same again because from this point on we want to honor we want to honor our fathers we want to honor our mothers and we want to respect them indeed heavenly father i want to thank you for pastor mwedi for allowing him to speak that hard topic to us today may you bless him and release a double portion of his blessing and dear father may you release that blessing that your father can come from a father upon him and his wife and children in the mighty name of Jesus for this we ask in Jesus name amen let's get seated the lord bless you